John Spillane. You are so <laughs> welcome to Flop Culture. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Are you nervous? I'm no, after that clap. I don't know yeah. if there's that included, but it suddenly put me on edge. I was so confident. We'd synced up the sound so good. Yeah. And then I'm not showing any shade. You, so kind of seems like you are, but I agree. I have a little bit of shade there. Yeah. And I, I was just leading into the nervousness now yeah. was the shade throwing. <laughs> okay, well, don't be nervous. I just uh. want to say, I saw you two years ago at Peter McGann and Shane Daly Burns Christmas Spectacular, whatever the fuck yeah. that was called, in Liberty Hall. And you, not to ruin this, if you ever plan on doing this bit again, but you came out dressed as the Grinch and oh, gave yeah, out yeah. packets of smoked fish to people in the audience. Yeah, packets and of mackerel, yeah. I... I thought I was going to get sick laughing. So I just want to say thank you for that bit because it has sustained me for several months and has maintained my mental health. So I do really appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, the the, the Grinch, he's a good man. And not mackerel, I think, is a good Christmas gift. Yeah. I just like the sound packet of mackerel as well. Okay. It's like, here's a packet of mackerel. (laughs) If I'd known you liked the bit so much, I would have come dressed as the Grinch. I'm kind of disappointed, big, yeah. But you yeah. also didn't come dressed as the flop, which I was also maybe slightly anticipating. But the you flop. did come oh, with a, well, a, a, a blue, big adjacent to the spoilers, flop. Spoilers, there's lots of blue involved in my... <laughs> <laughs> if you're a fan of the colour blue, wait till you get a load to what I've got over here. I uh, no, It's no spoiling, but I think I've got one of the greatest cinematic achievements for the colour blue coming yeah. up here. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> well, you can't spoil it because we, we have to talk about it. So, uh, oh, yeah, what, yeah. so a, what did you pick for your flop? Uh, none other than, well, it's, it's March of 2024. So we're coming up now on the 10 year anniversary <gasps> of one oh, of the yeah. great, of April 2024, of uh, 2014. One of the greatest cinematic achievements of all time. Amazing Spider-Man 2, Enter Electro. Amazing. Incredible. Did you watch this when it came out? Absolutely. Okay. And were you like hyped for it? So hyped. Had you bought into the Andrew Garfield, like the the web of works as it was called? Were you like, yeah, I love him. I need to see what happens next. So here was the crack with it. Okay. Uh, Saw the first Amazing Spider-Man. Hated it. Okay. (laughs) Hated it. Amazing (laughs) Spider-Man 1. Pew! It sinks. <laughs> okay. It sinks. I rewatched it for today. Okay. And it does not hold up to my already low standards. Okay. It's the only boring Spider Man movie. Okay. I will say, I like them all. And I'm no sh- I feel guilty ragging on something. I, making, I, I'm sure making a Spider Man movie is the biggest pain in the world. Mm. And everybody involved. And there's little flashes of like, Andrew Garfield so good in it, Emma Stone so good in it, their, charis- their, ke- their chemistry. Off it's the charts. Off the charts. I like that this version of Spider-Man is like a scientist. Like he's like trying to figure stuff out with science. So like he's weaker than the lizards. So I got to figure out, okay, lizards are cold-blooded. He's like doing little experiments and working on stuff in his garage. You're like, oh yeah, this is class. He's in his garage working away there. Um, uh, there's loads good about it, uh, but there's loads really boring and dull about it. It's okay. just very... 2012. If you look at it, you're like, oh my... He started playing like that... That game, that phone game where the ball the ball bounces around. Yeah. There's one scene where he's just playing that sin on his web and it's like, Spider-Man. <laughs> get in the modern day, lad. <laughs> Jeez Louise, Spidey, come on now. But did you like Andrew Garfield? I, I loved Andrew Garfield. Okay. I thought he is so great. And Tobey Maguire's got its charm. And it's like, it's so funny that it's the year 2000 and we're making a movie from the 1960s. <laughs> like, it's so insane that this is, exists and is good as well. Mm. But it's not a, that's not a real a person that, okay. that, Andrew Garfield, that Tobey Maguire is playing. But like this, I was like, he's such a good actor. You really, like, he's got this thing. I'm not talking about his eyes. That's fine, yeah, absolutely. He's got this thing in his eyes where you just like care about him so much. <laughs> You know, where he's looking at you, he's looking at whoever he's looking at. You're like, oh my God, I feel, whatever you're feeling, I'm feeling. Kind of like when you see a sad dog in an animal shelter. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Garfield's like a humanoid Such of Such empathy, that. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's so good. Emma Stone's so good. Um, you didn't think he was too old? Because I know that's a criticism that's levelled a lot at this yeah. particular iteration of Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire is at least in his 50s. But that's the thing. Tobey Maguire was like 40 years yeah, of age. Yeah, he's in his 50s. And like, he is older, but he's like... He's like a lanky, he's believable as a lanky. It's more so in this, which, which we'll get to. <laughs> Don't you worry, dear listener. Uh, more uh, In the first one, he is like, he's supposed to be a teenager. It's like, you're in your early 20s. Yeah. In the second one, he's just graduated. He's a college student and he looks like 
he's in his mid to early 20s. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, it kind of tracks. Yeah, okay. But the first one is, yeah, he's a bit old. Okay. So the first one, he gets his powers. We meet Gwen Stacy. They're yeah. like, they fancy each other. Yeah. He's still trying to get to the bottom of what happened to his parents. His uncle yeah. dies. The usual kind of Spider-Man the stories, usual whatever. Spider -Man stuff. That's kind of why I didn't love about it as well. It's like, I've seen this. Okay. So Are we then, on a, there's that... It's one of the worst, not worst scenes, but it's just one of the mo the clunkiest scenes ever where they're like, all right, so we've, we're making our fourth Spider-Man movie in five years. We're going to have to have Uncle Ben tell him about great power comes great responsibility. We don't want him to say it because why would you want him to say it? <laughs> why would you want him to say it? You wouldn't want that now, would you? To say the line. No, let's not have him say it. Let's have him do the most awkward. He's like, you know... When you have an ability to do a thing, you should do the thing. <laughs> Not because you want to do the thing, because it's your responsibility. And it's like this long, like, meandering. You're like, gee, oh. <laughs> just, just say the be line. Spider-Man. Say the line, Martin Sheen. Be, just start the movie and be Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, so... For that and many reasons. The fighting's really boring in it. The lizard is lame. God, yeah. I as much as I love, I don't too. like. Yeah, like this. The, 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 yeah, the Amazing Spider-Man one is low down. Okay, so well, what happens in the second one then, and what was it about it that drew you back in? Oh, okay, yeah. So I was hyped for it. I was seeing the trailers, and because I, I liked, I, I felt like the chess pieces were on the board. So yeah. I'm like, okay, that last one was a little clunky and awkward and stale. But this one, we, he's already Spider-Man. Yeah. And I like the casting. Yeah. And I like Gwen Stacy. Yeah. And, okay, we're doing Electro. That's a different kind of a villain. Too many superhero movies. It's, you know, a guy fighting the guy with the same powers. Mm. And it's like, we're the same. And it's like, a spider fighting electricity is so random. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Lots of spiders natural enemy. Electricity, you know? <laughs> So I'm like, this is why. How is Spider Man gonna fight electricity? So <laughs> that has me excited. <laughs> then they start announcing more like villains. Okay. And I and I know this was a huge bone of contention where people are like, there's too many villains. I'm like, there's. I just, Spider Man fights loads of villains. Yeah. He lives in. A, I like the. I like when my comic book world is a comic book world, and that's what this movie does so well is you're like, this is a bloody comic book. Like, this is, there's rhinos running about and <laughs> green goblins and spoilers if you haven't seen this movie from oh, 10 no, years ago. Oh, no, we are ago. actively spoiling it, so <laughs> tough shit. I know, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, so I was like, there's, there's just, I just felt, I liked the trailer. There was a promise of a whole bunch of villains. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Mm. Love Spider-Man. It's my favorite thing. Like, when I was growing up, my Auntie Kate got me a Spider-Man comic. And that was like, some people have Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or football. <laughs> uh, athletics. Not around here, partner. Not uh, around here. Career. <laughs> wife. <laughs> uh, but old Johnny Boy, Spider-Man, was like my favorite thing. So I felt like this just feels like the most Spider-Man movie they could make. And it kind of is. Okay. Of any of the Spider-Man movies, I think this might be the most Spider-Man, for good and bad. Okay, interesting. It's the most, yeah. Jamie Foxx's Electro. Thoughts? An, an icon of blue cinema. <laughs> <laughs> an icon of blue cinema. Because he's uh. often, when this movie comes up, he's often critiqued. Yeah, he is the real punching bag of the movie. And you can tell because when they made the the... Tom Holland one, they were like, all right, let's just, Jamie Foxx, you're now just Jamie Foxx instead <laughs> of being uh, electro cowlick. You are now just cool guy, no blue. Shame. <laughs> uh, you're just suddenly just a normal man instead of, I dig it. I dig it, especially early on when he's just running around with this crazy... Because you hear Jamie Foxx playing Electro, a thing comes in your... I remember watching the movie and sitting down and being like, all right, here we go. I go well, the first 10 minutes of this movie are insane. 
Yeah, sorry. There is also, like, if you haven't really come in from the first movie as well and you're not super familiar with Spider-Man, I feel like you'd be like, what the fuck is going on? It's I, insanity. I've never seen this. I've watched the first one, and I, uh, but I obviously watched the second one for to do this podcast. <laughs> and it opens and it's like a plane hijack scene. I was like, sorry? <laughs> sorry? Is, it is. I. It's, it's so bad, that opening. I have to, like, so... I went and, and this is like, I had a rough time with the first one. I sat down and that play hijack scene starts and I'm like... Were you like, oh no, it's happening again? Oh, I don't care about Peter Parker's parents. <laughs> I don't care if they're spies. Why is this Richard Parker the movie like? <laughs> Who cares about Richard Parker? Truly. And he's just, he's got this laptop and he's got to upload it to Roosevelt. Sorry, I actually took notes about that. Yeah. How is the internet still working on that plane? The plane is falling to, half of it's like shunted off and he's still like do, 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 do. he's got what? a little cable you see he's very he's ethernet, got, cable. He's got brilliant. ethernet cable brilliant ethernet cable yeah because yeah. it's in the past as well because remember this came out in 2014 but that scene would have been 20 minutes 20 years before then yeah so like that was like in sorry, the 90s sorry is this supposed to be set in the 90s that scene's in the 90s yeah oh sorry yeah that yeah because yeah, 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 yeah it was 2014 and he's like 20 and he's like... No, well, you're right, you're right. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I'm making it in, I'm making like, it out. It's maybe like the year 2000. Okay. And he's <laughs> plugging in his laptop, uploading to Roosevelt, <laughs> his little subway station <laughs> laboratory to basically tell us Sonny loves him. Um, that scene is, I was so panicked and so worried. And then the music hits and you see like the Spider-Man symbol and then it starts flapping and then you realise it's his back and he's just flying through the city and you're like... Unreal. We've made it. Unreal. I've and made it through the wilderness. And first, like, him swinging through the streets is the most Spider-Man thing that's ever been put on movie. It's the best costume. It's the best the web costume swinging. is lit. It's unreal. It's so gorgeous and vibrant and, like, it's shiny. Fine. It's colourful. Yeah. It's got these big eyes on it. He's a lovely old lank. Yeah. He's not this little buff, like, Tobey Maguire's, like, looks like he's been drinking milk. <laughs> like, Andrew Garfield is a soy boy. We and don't want our Spider-Man drinking milk. No, get him away from it. Milk, along with electricity, is one of the enemies of spiders. <laughs> So he's swinging away. That's class. Big, goofy. Oh, there's a plutonium truck. And we got to stop that. the plutonium. I'm like, hate yes. That. Yeah. You hated it. No, I hate that. Is it like you're going about your day and there's a oh, plutonium yeah, truck yeah, driving yeah, around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hate when no. that happens. Oh my God. I'm like, yes. Unreal. And what? He's graduating. Of course, he's late for something. He's always late. Yeah. Gwen's commencement speech. Yeah, Gwen's she's very, speech. but still seemingly very surprised that she has to give a speech, even though she knows she's valedictorian. Yeah. And Crazy. She's, and she's talking uh, rather on the nose about living forever <laughs> and immor and how you know you don't know how much time you've got on this earth the foreshadowing there <laughs> my god I like imagine if you were in your high school graduation and your valedictorian just came up and started talking about death <laughs> so we're all gonna die someday me first because I'm Gwen Stacy <laughs> famously dead a comic book character <laughs> <laughs> Gwen Stacy I'm going to die at the end of this movie just in case you had to figure that out <laughs> that's the whole point of my character as I die um, but anyway best of luck in college <laughs> go do a keg stand <laughs> I'm going to be here see you all in UCD not because yeah. I'll be dead my dad died last year <laughs> now I'm about to die my, I'm about to die yeah join some societies hope you have fun oh, I was home clubs and socks <laughs> I'm not going to make it past this summer what did you think of the Gwen Stacy death scene as you were watching it and I suppose more recently? Like, were you gagged initially watching it in cinema when it happened? Oh my God. Yeah, like, it's of... Is your comic book nerd, you know, Gwen Stacy, her, her, the only thing about her is she dies. Okay. Like, that's her, like, she's just... She's Spider-Man's girlfriend who dies and then they replace her Mary Jane. And Emma Stone is so good in the role and she's so great. None of that exists, like, her being really fun and good. And it, she was this very 1960s two-dimensional. But she exists to die. So you're like... The second she's cast in the first one, you're like, it's Countdown to No More Gwen Stacy. But in the movie, and she's in the clock tower... And you're like, well, this isn't a bridge. <laughs> and that's where she she's famously throws off the bridge. They actually go to the bridge where she dies in the movie. And they have like a, their moment, like, I'm going to move to London with you. And you're like, maybe she's not. And then she's falling down. That scene is, that whole fight is so good with him and the goblin in there. It's so quick. But 
How often are you watching a superhero movie now or any kind of a franchise movie and there's no kind of heft mm. or weight? I can't believe I'm talking about heft and weight with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> but like, it's nasty. He's got little spiky stuff. He's trying to stab him. There's gears and there's little threads and she is so fragile. Her, and but her she's face like, as well. Like Emma Stone brings so much to that character. Like she's, it's her slowly realising she's like, he's not, he can't save me now. I'm dead. Like, I'm, the, I'm fucked like this is I'm falling in a t- clock tower with a goblin man just and he's he doesn't want to take over the world he's not trying to put a beam up in the sky he wants to kill me he just wants to kill he me he just wants yeah. to kill me and Peter's just got to try and stop him and it's like gladiator it's, <laughs> it's so oh, much it's yeah it's intense and my sister got so mad at me Okay. My younger sister, Catherine. I'll give her a shout out on the pod. Shout out, Catherine. Shout out, Catherine. You're one of the greats. <laughs> but when I didn't tell her that Gwen Stacy died and she like was in buckets and she was like, you had to, you should have warned me that like that was going to happen. She was so upset. Um, they do actually talk about the opening. Do you know the, 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 the spy scene at the start? Mm. The whole movie, there's like this, like there's like time in it. Yeah. There's like the opening, the very opening shot of the movie is you coming out of the darkness and you start going through gears and clockwork and a ticking hand and you zoom out and it's Richard Parker's watch on the plane for the spy scene. That's so evil. Oh my God. It's like from the very start, it's telling you like this is in the whole movie, there's like clocks and timers and they're all talking about time and like Aunt May's talking (laughs) about what you do with your time and Peter's talking about what you do with your time and... Then you got no more time because you, the, you the, literally time when dead. she dies, it's because the clock strikes midnight and then that snaps the thing and all the, 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 the clock goes and she just falls down. And the. <sighs> yeah, the sound of her smacking her skull off the ground. That's. S- yeah. Smacking it. Smacking. Oh, it's so mean. Yeah. And he goes down and it's like, did he save her? It's like, you yeah, haven't saved her. No. I remember my heart was like, as he's going down, I was with my friend, Ethan McNamara, another shout out. Shout out Ethan McNamara. Yeah, shout out Ethan McNamara. Full name. Absolutely. Get him, give him a full name. Get married here in a few months. Here we go. I'm, this is uh, spoilers for your best man speech. <laughs> this is, I'm going to be talking, I'm going to bring this on stage and be like, me and Ethan went to see this movie one time. You know, marriage is a lot like the amazing side run too. It is. I'm going to go up, I'm going I'm to just read Gwen Spacey's. <laughs> Oh I'm going to read a valedictorian. Time. I'm me, famously dead character, John Splat. <laughs> but yeah, I remember just like, as he's going on, I'm like, I, 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 she's dead, isn't she? Oh, don't be dead. I re- and you, the thing is, you don't want her to be dead. Yeah. You so don't want her to be dead. Yeah. And then she's so dead. Yeah. Oh, she's it's so awful. Dead. Yeah. And then there's a really beautiful scene, and this is, we'll, we can, well, there's loads of, we'll get back to Jamie Foxx and a lot of, there's a lot bad and camp that I find charming, but is bad. Mm. But there's a really tender, beautiful scene after that where we've got a little bit of Peter, we've shown the times pass, and Peter's been in mourning, and there's no Spider Man anymore, and he's just distraught with grief. And Aunt May is walking around the house and she sees him and she comes up to him with a box and she's like, oh, Peter, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting away uh, some, some of ben, Ben's stuff. And Peter's like really taken aback by this. You're, you're going to pack away, you're taking away Ben's stuff, you're giving away. He's like, no, 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 I could never do that. But I'm going to take a, one last look at it and feel it. And then I'm going to put it where it belongs. And then I'm just going to, you know, and it's just kind of like, because Aunt May's being through what Peter's being through. Mm. Like, in the last year, she's lost her husband. She's lost the love of her life. She's lost her partner. Like, and there's, they do a real thing of like, Aunt May's really grieving in these movies. Mm. And she really feels like I'm a single mother to a recently, like a, a son who's lost their father, which Uncle Ben is like. And it's just really, and it's, uh, you're like, oh my God, I forgot that Sally Field and Andrew Garfield are like Academy Award people. I love Sally Field. They're oh. so good. Yeah. She's such a great Aunt May. Yeah. Marissa Tomei is some Look, crack. Look, let's be real. She was, she was hot, okay? She's hot. She's hot. It's funny, hot She's Aunt hot, May. Fun, hot and funny and what else though? Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Tobey Maguire Aunt May, hilarious that we're just doing like this Aunt May. Like we're really just, we're not going to update it at all to make it in the real world. No. We're just like, just 
the impossibly oldest she's woman. She's 8,000 years she's old. She's 8,000 years old. Like, we went is, so far one way and the other for every like, movie. She is a pilgrim. Like <laughs> She is a pilgrim. She saw it. She was there. She was there, yeah. She is like, I was at the first Thanksgiving. <laughs> and we're like, Ami, don't talk about that past. <laughs> But no Sally Field the table. does no it politics. both so well. Where like she feels modern, she feels like she's a real person in the real world. Yeah. But she has this wisdom. She's lived a life. She's not this fr- like Spider. Like in the comic books, Aunt May is mostly a person who gets sick. Okay. So I'm talking about like Gwen Stacy. You know, I love comic books, but some some of the ones from the '60s particularly are dated. But lots of it is just kind of two dimensional. And Gwen Stacy is a nice person who dies, mm. and Aunt May is a nice old woman who gets sick a lot. Okay. But Aunt May in this is like she's got a career. She wants to be a nurse. She's funny. She's got like I'm doing your laundry for you. They've got good banner. She's not funny like a Marvel new Marvel movie where it's like I'm quippy Mick she's funny like our mams would be funny yeah you know and Andrew Garfield in this movie is funny like a kind of a dork would be funny Mm. like he's not really actually funny he's just trying there's a great scene with him and Harry Osborn when they first meet each other and they try and be funny with each other and they're not really very funny Mm. but it's so on the like it's like you know your friend where he like he talks about like, oh, Harry Osborn was like, oh, I didn't recognize you without the monobrow. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, this Harry Osborn's a spoiled rich kid who wouldn't be, but that's his way of trying to be funny. Mm. And he's really on the nose. And if this was made today, there would be like the, ca- the cast of SNL trying to craft the perfect joke for Harry Osborn to say. Mm. But don't give him a perfect joke. He's not a comedian. Yeah, that's fair. What mm. about Harry Osborn then as Green Goblin as a villain? How does he work for you? Um, I like I was fr- I, I like the wrong footing of your Norman Osborn is in the first movie. It's Spider Man's worst villain. They're eluding. It's a little bit of like a dark like Batman Begins. It's like, you just see like little shadows of him, and you're like, he's gonna be the second movie, mm. and they're gonna Joker it. And this is Spider Man's main villain, Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. And then they just kill him off. Yeah, classic. But I think in an interesting way, and it's like, they do bring it into like, it's all fathers and sons and Peter's father and Harry's father had this relationship and now they have, they've inherited this rivalry, but they're friends. And I think it gives him real actual motivation. I think Dane DeHaan's a great actor. I think he is... Uh, a full-on Slytherin in this movie. He is not a real person, but again, that's the fun of a comic book world. And I like it. Again, it's not nuanced. And it's not... But it's just... It's just comic booky in a really charming way. I think he delivers a lot of bizarreness quite well. Mm. You got to like there's a very threatening scene with him and Gwen Stacy in an elevator mm. with the worst CGI behind them ever. Yep. Like the awful CGI. But like I think he's very good. He's his career kind of fell off a cliff mm. after this. He was kind of like going to be some people are going to call him the next DiCaprio and stuff. Yeah. And that didn't happen. But um he's very good in that. The Money movie, he shows up, he plays like a manager of a GameStop. Okay. And he's like now playing people his age and it's like, oh, it's fun. Get the end on and stuff like this. Yeah. But I think he's very good and I wanted to see more of him. I like the goblin design. I like, there's a deleted scene where he just like kills a bunch of people in Oscorp. Right. And like escaping and it's all clunky CGI, but it's like, I wanted to, I, I would have liked to have seen a movie with this guy. Yeah, I think my issue isn't that there were too many villains. It was that, and I, I don't have massive issues with Electro. I think the the issues were with the dialogue. I don't, mm. Jamie Foxx didn't have a lot to, de- whatever his direction was and the dialogue, the writing was, he didn't have a lot to work with there. <laughs> but uh, uh, Harry Osborne was more threatening. So yes. I would have liked more him, less of Electro, but like b- better and more refined. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. there's a one point towards the end where he's fighting with Spider-Man and it's like, it could be like video game dialogue. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, yes. huh, thought you I could get a, you could get away that easily? Huh, you're going to have to do more than that. But it, he says that like three or four times. It's so stoic and da, 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 yeah. da, 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 like there's nothing to it. Yeah, it's this movie's very video gamey. 
Yeah. The whole thing, it's very video gamey. Again, for better and worse. Okay. Like, it is like... That opening scene is made, it may as well be like a video. Like, it looks like you're playing PS4, like. Mm. Um, I do think that they get the balance well where it's like... Electro is there, but it's... Then, the Harry Osborne thing is just kind of taken away in the background. Mm. And I don't think they ever pull focus from each other or like... But I might be wrong, and I know some people would definitely say they definitely pull focus from each other. But this podcast is exclusively for people who are always wrong, so just bear oh, that in good, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll lean into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll tell this you. Is, this isn't for people I've who got are a correct. Surprise, I've, I've, I won't show all my cards yet, but I've got something for you at the end oh. that's going to really, yeah, that's a little, yeah, yeah, to show you just how wrong a person can be. Okay. And a very, uh, for, yeah. Anyway, that's a t- teaser. Ooh, ooh. But, but you thought the balance was good between the villains. So, I was watching this the other night. I watched it in two parts because I was, I just, I, w- I wanted to keep watching. Believe me, I wanted to keep watching. Well, it is but, very, it's quite, I don't know if it needs to be two hours, 20 minutes. It's two hours and 20 minutes. But, and this is where I think I might be the exception to the rule. I paused it after the first fight with Electro. Okay. And I'm like, okay, we've kind of, like, we've introduced the characters and the setting and... Okay, we kind of started, and I feel I felt like honestly I was gonna click it and it was gonna say thirty minutes. We were over an hour into the movie. I'm like, this is moving at a clip for such a long and bad movie. <laughs> it moves at a clip, so I'm like, all right, but there's not much. There's there's very little Spider Man in this movie. Yeah, actually, that's a very fair point. It seems to be more focused on the. The Peter Parker and Gwen yeah. of it all, which I do think works. Yeah, and, and the then, best thing in the movie is their relationship. Yeah, because they were also going out in real life. Yeah. Like it's the horniness is. It's so hal- horny. Ba- ball. It's so. But I think horny. it's also what makes Gwen dying so effective because it's like, yeah. oh, you guys were actually in love. Okay. Yeah, this you is were. Yeah, sad. you guys were, like. The all three of the Spider Men went out with all three of their love interests. Tobey Maguire went Toby out with Maguire Kirk. Kirsten, did yeah, 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 for years, yeah. They broke up between Spider-Man 2 and 3. Oh, okay. And Tom Holland with Zendaya and Andrew Garfield with uh, Emma Stone. Okay. This is the only movie, though, where I believe they're riding. But that's the thing. I, yeah. don't, get, I don't get that in the first Spider-Man trilogy no, at all. No, Kirsten Dunst, Tobey Maguire, there's no... They are sleeping in two single beds. Yeah. In the same room, like they are. Zendaya and Tom Holland are, he can't wait till he lets her top him. <laughs> <laughs> like he is just, he's talking to Ned Leeds being like, I really want to top Mary Jane. <laughs> oh my God. He might be a frigid like. Maybe, yeah. He Maybe. might be, he gives off big frigid energy. Huge frigid energy. Yeah. Um, Ned Leeds, no way. He's out, uh, he's, he's smacking lips with Liz yeah. Allen the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But, um... I love that they allude as well in that new Spider-Man where <laughs> Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are both warning Tom Holland about your best friend is going to become a goblin <laughs> and try and kill you. <laughs> and then like he's just looking at Ned Leeds and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> Ned's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Don't look at me. We're going to take a very quick break, but me and John will be back right after this. We were talking about the setting of the actual movie, but like you'd know this was made in the 2010s because... Pursuit of Happiness, mm. uh, Kid Cudi features quite frequently. The remix, the Project X remix, I will say, not the original. Talk to me about the other musical moments in for this film. You, <laughs> for you, na, 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 na. What, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Like, it's, this is why, this is really what I'm trying to get to with this movie. And okay. this is why I think it's got such a charm. Is that movie, that moment is so cringe and bad. It's so cringe and bad, but I love it. So it's him, he's doing a Charlie Day on it, trying to like work out what the fuck happened to his parents and he's doing like all the strings on the walk. He's just had a fight with Gwen Stacy. Yeah. And he's decided because of this fight with Gwen Stacy, I'm going to find out what happened to my parents. Yeah. That was the, that's the literal train of thought. Logical next Is he step, goes yeah. from, he's upset with, it, he's upset, like he comes back and he's kind of upset in his house. He's walking around like, oh, I'm upset. Oh, I love her, but oh, I, uh. and then he goes, you know what? I'm going to f- solve my parents' murder. That's going to be, and then this, yeah. he, this music comes on as he starts putting stuff up on a corkboard, an already cluttered corkboard. He has to move like a chair out of the way so he can put it down to the floor. And the song plays. For you, for you. 
<laughs> what is that song? I don't know. Oh my it, God, I'm it haunts it. me. Yeah. God, I love it. Gone, I genuinely gone. love it. Like I got. Like, oh my god, it's gone, gone, gone by fucking Philip Phillips. He won like American Idol in two thousand and fucking. Unreal, fucking... of course. Jesus Christ! Of course, of course it was. Yeah, and like this is a soundtrack that also features Kendrick Lamar. I should say, like yeah. we are going again into the spectrum here. Unreal. Like the, 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 there's like this is like this really cool song that plays. It's a cool song that plays in the credits, but does not match the movie at all. It's no. like a cool hip hop song. Where it's just showing just basically blueprints of all the villains' weapons for the next seven movies that they're never gonna make. Like they do, like they, there's this one scene where they walk through the like the hall of exposition where it's just like, look at this Dr. Octopus arms and this vulture wings. Look at these movies we're never gonna make because this movie's gonna lose a whole bunch of money. Um, but then the credits has like this hi- like cool hip-hop song set to schematic designs for the villains for like the next seven movies that they full on just never ever make these movies yeah um that for you scene i honestly i fist bumped i was like yes i i'm so happy this is happening in a very like room like do you know when like people go to the room and they celebrate the scenes mm. it's one of those moments where it's like this is this is so crap i love it this is brilliant uh, it grossed 709 million worldwide I, so it was the ninth highest grossing film of 2014 but I think domestically it only I think it only just made its budget back or just yeah. under which so is considered like it was a hugely like, expensive movie yeah. yeah it was a massively expensive movie they haven't ever really revealed how much it cost it's going to say like the production's budget is like 250 million but there's a million reshoots and Check it was the out largest the deleted ever... scenes. Like, <laughs> there's like scenes where like his dad comes back from the grave, like his dad's alive uh, now. Hardly. There is, yeah. Mary Jane's in the movie, they cut her out of the movie. Shailene Woodley, I Shailene didn't know Woodley, this. Yeah. There's a whole bunch, there's a scene where Norman Osborne's head is in a jar and it's been reanimated. There's insane, like there's, Adam's losing there's a his whole shit here. other movie that doesn't exist. Yeah. Like, you should, I, I wish I had, I should have Googled him up. Kevin Feige, they like showed him notes and scripts because mm. they were kind of teetering in a relationship with Marvel. And like, he's just like ragging on like, no one cares about Peter Parker's spy parents. No, one, it was like, it got released in the Sony hack. But that kind of led to the light of being like, it says the production budget's like 250 million. Mm. It's probably somewhere around 400 million. They spent so much on marketing. If this money ma- movie made money back, it was maybe like 50 million. It was and minimal, like, which at the time was viewed as a failure for a them, huge I think. Failure. And the critics didn't like it. We could go through it, but yeah, I think it's it the is. the lowest rated Spider Man movie. It's the only Spider Man movie that's got the green thing on Rotten Tomatoes. The certified rotten, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Guy Lodge of Variety said redundancy remains a problem but this overlong superhero sequel gets on by sound, fury and star chemistry which is a kind of okay review but um, he, I, sorry you mentioned the Sony hack there that happened in 2014 as well which is where Sony Pictures had a lot of confidential documents released have you ever read this email that was leaked as part of the Sony hack about Spider-Man and about like thoughts for the follow up movies that were sent to Amy Pascal who was like heading up Sony Pictures at the time I th- I feel like I would have at the time but I'm ready for I'm ready to hear it okay. I've forgotten most of it I'm sure okay so it's from a man called Nick Shore who hopefully doesn't have a job anymore because my god this is this is a girly, girly, girlies and boys, no more imposter syndrome after reading this, right? Okay, so the, the, the subject of the email is Spidey Thought, and it says, Hey, Amy, just a couple of random thoughts from wh- whatever, he's in an airport. And he has them bullet pointed out. So bullet point number one. A rising trend we see with millennials are the really extreme forms of experiential exercise, like Tough Mudder, in brackets, a sort of filthy triathlon, the colour run, and even things like hot power yoga veganism, etc. Millennials will often post no big deal on their social media after doing it, as in no big deal, also known as the humble brag. Wondering if Spidey could get into that in some way. He's super athletic, bendy, strong, intense. And also, it's no big deal to him, of course. This gets I worse. I just climbed a wall, <laughs> humble brag. <laughs> no, bi- no, bi- get, no big deal. I got the proportionate strength of a spider, <laughs> humble brag. <laughs> okay, second bullet point. EDM, in brackets, electronic dance music, is the defining music for millennials. Wondering if there's an EDM angle somewhere with Spidey, question mark. His move... I, oh, sorry. I'm, I, how have we not talked about the electro music yet? Oh, sorry, let's. Oh, yeah, EDM makes it in there anyway. Now, I like it. Okay. 
I know I'm again, I know I'm wrong. I love the music of Electro in this. Okay. I think it's so over the top. It's so insane. He's an electric man. Let's make the most electric music you've ever heard in your life. He is like, when they're in Times Square and it's like whispering, like, he lied to me. I'm like, honestly getting a little bit of goosebumps being like, <laughs> they lied to you, Electro. <laughs> Alistair Smythe was mean to you at work. <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man, you got to blow out your candles. <laughs> Do you know what I couldn't understand? When Electro got his powers, his tooth gap was automatically gone. How does that happen? It's, they show it. it the, the electricity melts his teeth into it. Ah, uh, So his okay. teeth all fuse together. So like, even like the, like he's got a big gap between the two. That fixes him, but all the other gaps, they all fit. It's like he's wearing a gum shield now. Okay. Yeah. Invisalign. There you go. Um, sorry, the last point in this Sony yes. email I have to read. Snapchat just launched a story functionality, which is sort of day in the life of me, told in a series of Snapchats that expire after 24 hours. It has a very VIP quality about it, since it's invitation only. Getting invited into Spidey's Snapchat circle would be huge and very buzzworthy and cool. And I just had no notes. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. that's that's why these I think, are the people who are in charge of things. These okay? are the people who are in charge of things, and that's why I. This is really why I think the people involved in this movie deserve so much credit. Mm. Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Mark Webb, the director. Okay, mm. the director's name is Mark Webb. I know. The director's name is they, Mark Webb. They call it the Webiverse. His his <laughs> franchise, like, yeah, he was born to, to direct it. He's born to direct it, and they have to dodge. Snapchat, EDM music, veganism. Well, they couldn't dodge the EDM music. They couldn't dodge. No one can dodge. No one's perfect. Even Spidey nicks a bullet every so often. <laughs> they were like, we'll draw the line of veganism, but we'll let but you like, have the EDM Norman music. Norman Osborn heads in jars. Dad's coming back from the grave. Like, the amount of terrible, like a tidal wave of terrible that was heading towards this movie. And I think it ended up being... Good crack. Yeah. And I think it really is like, there's some really great fight sequences. There is some really camp moments. There's a German scientist who is going like, I will experiment on the electro. And you're like, yeah, throw that in here. It's a comic book. Mm. Why not? Let's, you know, not everything needs to be Dune part two, okay? Mm. <laughs> Let's like... So true. So true. Like, we don't need to Dune up Spider-Man. This feels like... These movies are for children. Yeah. These movies yeah. are for children. And like, let's put some stuff in there for the kids. Mm. You know? I'm man enough to admit, I'm man enough to admit that I like things for children. I don't need us to adult up the children things for adults now so that I can pretend that I'm not a child. There's some stuff that should be adulty and should be, if you're making Daredevil, make it sad and noir and, and Catholic and, yeah. and violent. <laughs> So Catholic, you know. But if you're but if you're making Spider Man, make it colorful and you know, I've got a nephew, he's two. He loves Spider Man. He mm. runs around dressed as Spider Man. Like, give him a German scientist in the movie that he can be like, oh yeah, that's a bit of goof. And also give him eels biting a man. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh my god. Uh what would you have liked to have seen happen in a in a third amazing Spider Man? Here's the thing. Okay. I think we'll get it. Do you re do you really think? I Andrew Garfield pushing mid forties gonna be putting yeah. back on the Spidey suit? Well technically he has already. Yeah. But spoilers for yeah. Spider Man No Way Home. But. Yeah, I think I surprise we haven't heard it announced already. Okay. I think this Venom universe is so the amazing Spider Man. Okay. Like it's all it feels like the same world. It feels like the Webiverse, doesn't it? Like it mm. feels it's got the same like campiness, goofiness, cringiness, badness. I haven't seen Madam Web yet. Like, Uncle Ben is in it. Like, it's said in the 90s, like, Uncle Ben is, like, a young man in it. It's, it's all about a conspiracy and all this, like... I feel like they, may, they, they allude to Spider-Man in, like, the Morbius... I can't believe I'm talking about the Morbius post credit scene. I can't believe it either. Yeah. What is my life? <laughs> With, uh, they delude the Spider-Man. I think for the right paycheck, and that's a big thing, but I think they will do 
10 years, like it's, 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 they will do, it will be like 10, 15 years from now. Harry Osborne will have been in prison that whole time. We got that beautiful full circle moment of Andrew Garfield and that new Spider-Man and saving Zendaya and they recreate the shot from that. And that's why I think like, I think this movie is more iconic than people think because if you look at that new Spider-Man where all the Spider-Mans come back, I don't think any movie is more represented in that than this one. Mm. I think like there's definitely Spider-Man 2 with Dr. Octopus and of course Green Goblin's the main villain. But like Electro's such a big part of that. Andrew Garfield's character arc is the m biggest in the movie. Like he's the one everybody came out talking about. I really feel like, and also Sony just want to make money. Mm. And I feel like there would be an audience for it. I think if they went and they said, we're doing the amazing Spider-Man 3, Harry Osborn has been in prison for 10 years because you know what? He tried to kill somebody. He did kill somebody. And he, it, it, it's not likely he's gonna escape after a month. So he comes back from Marvel World and fuck it, it's the Venom world now. We've got Venom, Craven, all this crack and just make a big, dumb, goofy, you can make your good Spider-Man movies in the MCU and make a bunch of camp crap over here in the Sony world. They need, this, that Sony Venom universe needs their Spider-Man. Mm. It's this gaping hole. It's all, they're all Spider-Man-y kind of people. They're all talking about Spider-Man. There's Spider-Man graffiti as Morbius is walking down the street. Like Spider-Man exists, they need their Spider-Man. I don't think there's any more appropriate Spider-Man for that universe than Andrew Garfield, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think we'll get another one. What is it about Tom Holland's Spider-Man that you're... I like I, it. You do like it, but I do like what it. doesn't think, work about it for you? Pardon? What doesn't work about it for you? I think a lot of it's in the writing, weirdly. I think it's... He gets a lot of help. Okay. I've mentioned earlier, I like my Spider-Man. Spider-Man should be like, he's the ultimate underdog. He is... He's a, he's a smart kid. He's always fighting people who are bigger, stronger, faster than him. He's big and strong and fast. He's got superpowers, but he's fighting giant lizards mm. or electricity, <laughs> or he's fighting things that he shouldn't be able to beat. And he has to think his way out of it. And he's in his garage. Like there's a, there's a fun sequence in this. Um, the YouTube video is a little over the top, but he's trying to figure out how to make his web shooters not explode when they get electrified. And it's like, yeah, that's Spider-Man. He's in his garage. Nobody knows who he is. And he's just trying to figure this stuff out. And I feel like in this new one, he, he'll sit into a lab and he'll type in, make my suit the best. And then an impossible machine creates a CGI suit that's the best. I think he, I think Tom Holland's great in the performance. I think he, he does, he's a, he is really Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield put in a blender. Mm. Like he is a dork. But he is charming, but he is funny. I think there's loads to like about him. Um, and I think we're set up in a good place if there's more Tom Holland Spider-Man that he will just be a guy in New York City trying to get along. Mm. Uh, and I really like those movies. All three of those Tom Holland Spider-Man movies are really, really good. Mm. Uh, like I said, there's only the only the, the only Spider-Man movie I don't like is the first Amazing Spider-Man. Every other Spider-Man movie I like, even Spider-Man Three with Venom and all that crack. Like, again, I just think it's camp and bad, but in a fun way. Sorry, emo Tobey Maguire, brilliant. Hilarious, yeah. Brilliant. Unbelievable, yeah. N enough said. Yeah. Enough said. Like, great, but. I think I think Andrew Garfield is the best actor of the three of them. Yeah. I feel like this Spider-Man is the most New Yorker of the three of them. I feel like it's the most cartoony and comic booky of the three of them. It's the it's the least apologetic of the three of them. It's not trying to say like oh, I'm sorry I'm a comic book or I'm sorry I'm it's like no this is stupid and dumb and let's have a bit of crack. And I think Andrew Garfield is a he's been very vocal. He's a, he always been a huge fan of Spider-Man. He's a huge fan of the character. And I think they could do it. I don't know would it be good. <laughs> I I know I think I would like it. Mm. I want it. And I feel like if they're making Madam Web. If they're making Madam Web. Yeah. Surely they'd make the Amazing Spider-Man 3. Surely there's more of an audience for The Amazing Spider-Man 3 than there is Madam Web. Yeah. You know? Sorry, Madam Web. 
Well, no, it's not sorry, Madam <laughs> Webb. I'm not apologising to, to an inanimate film that Dakota Johnson is not that good in, so... <laughs> Have you seen it? I haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, bad. Uh, I, I, I might go see it after this now. I've got them all jonesed up to watch some bad Spider-Man. I wanna, yeah, I want to go and have a few drinks, like, you know, that kind of way. Yes, I do, yeah. Me and some friends want to go to... Shout out uh, Stephen Bradley. Shout out Stephen um, Bradley. Ronan. Uh, shout we out are going to go and go to All You Can Eat uh, Wings. At, in, this, in the centre of town and Brilliant. just get like burst at the seams and then sit into Madame Web and just be in a food coma. I think that was the way the director wanted you to watch it as yeah. far as I'm aware. That I think was so their too. artistic vision. Ultimately then, John, why do you think The Amazing Spider-Man 2 kind of flopped? Why do I think it flopped? Um, I think a lot of things. I think they really got focused on... The, the main reason, I think, honestly, I think there's a whole bunch of factors involved. I think a big one that doesn't get spoken about is I think when movies flop, you I think you more need to look at the previous movie. Okay. And I think the first Amazing Spider-Man was boring and not very exciting. And you remember, this is around the time when the first Avengers movie is coming out. This is the same year Guardians of the Galaxy came out. There was exciting comic book stuff coming out. And the first Amazing Spider-Man movie is so boring. And it's not exciting at all. And I think a lot of people were like, well, like, it's just Spider-Man again. Mm. Um, I do think then it got pantsed by the critics. So, that, all right, the first one's not great. This one's getting worst critical response. There's all this drama behind the scenes. Everybody's coming out. There's the producers and this and that and Amy Pascal and Norman Osborn's heads in a jar. And, like, um, I think there's just a lot. There was a lot of drama around this movie. A lot of skepticism and anxiety and it came out in April kind of defensively where it's like we're not putting this out quite in the summer we're just we don't want to go up against Guardians of the Galaxy and other Marvel stuff and people just kind of wanted the MC they wanted Spider-Man in the MCU and yeah it flopped I ultimately I think that was Tom Holland getting into the spot that was the right thing to happen yeah I think the end result is a good thing as f I, do I wish I had a crystal ball and could see what an amazing Spider-Man 3 from back then would have looked like? Yeah. But if that had happened, it probably would have flopped and it would be like Fantastic Four now where we'd only be getting another Spider-Man and it would feel like a little too late. And it's great that in the peak of the MCU and the peak of Marvel, we got Spider-Man in it. Mm. Spider-Man's in Endgame. He's in Infinity War. We've got three MCU Spider-Man movies. So I think it is for the better that it flopped. All these people are infinitely wealthy. I don't care if they make more money. <laughs> um, but I think now that, that the dust has settled, Amy Pascal, make a third one. Please. Come on. Please. Yeah. Please, Amy, please, I know you please. listen. John, what a pleasure it's been. Oh, I want to share you something oh. before we go. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, I, I was waiting for a good segue. So... Uh, <laughs> When this movie came out, I was in college. Okay. And I got a part-time job writing uh, movie reviews for a website called Irish News Review. Okay. And I wrote the most embarrassing review <laughs> ever about this movie. Okay, do you have it? I have it. Oh, perfect. I have not looked at this in 10 years. <laughs> this is the I best know way to end. it's so... I, I know I have some of the things I say are still burned in my mem yeah. memory and this is exists on the internet. Okay. So I thought I would, in the in the spirit of the podcast, share Brilliant. with you... Absolutely. My thoughts. This was 20-year-old John Spillane's thoughts. A 20-year-old film critic, which everybody uh, needs. Yeah. Okay. Irish News Review. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There are also, I'm, the writing's going to be bad as well, I think. <laughs> okay. okay. I've already looked at this first sentence as a nightmare. I'm struggling <laughs> to read it. There are few things that I have found more sensitive about than the things they loved <laughs> at a child. Just soak that sentence in there for a second. Brilliant. If, if you mention it with kindness, their faces will light up and if, each, if you speak ill towards it, they will be hurt in a special way. <laughs> <laughs> so 
already so much worse than I thought it would be. We all have that one thing from our childhood that we just love. For me, it's Spider-Man. I unabashedly love Spider-Man. However, this does not mean that I always love a Spider-Man film. <laughs> as much as, I, as anything done right in these films is pure ecstasy to me. <laughs> <laughs> However, if something is tackled wrong, it is akin to spitting in my mouth and slapping me in the face all at once. <laughs> The Sam Raimi Spider-Mans were pretty fun, but not what a modern representation of what the character and his villains are. The first in the Mark Webb series was good, despite hurdles put it in, in its own way with a needless conspiracy subplot and a lackluster villain in the lizard. I was being kind there. Yeah, I hated seems it back like then. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was trying to be positive. Okay, where I've lost my you place. You really here. hate the lizard. I hate the lizard. You hate that, the that lizard. That performance of the lizard. That that actor. I can't pronounce his name. Reese Siphons. Reese Siphons. He's a great actor. He was miscast. He I think, is yeah. so bad in that movie, yeah. and the writing is so bad. And it's like this bit's like, oh yes, you lizards don't like to be threatened. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I hate <laughs> you. Um, with all of that being said, I am delighted to report <laughs> that the Amazing Spider-Man Two is not only the best Spider-Man movie ever, in my humble opinion, it is the best superhero film ever, and has pipped the Avengers as the best cinema experience I have ever had. <laughs> For me, it was a near perfect film. <laughs> Andrew Garfield has taken the roles of both Peter Parker and Spider-Man, and gives us everything that I have imagined from the page and in a real world way. I'm really bad at writing. <laughs> this is a nightmare. His performance in this film is no perfect and now puts him on the Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> and Tom Hiddleston level of owning his character. I stand by that. I think he owns it, he's good. His relationship with Gwen Stacy is charming and playful yet with an obvious and intense love. <laughs> You know what they say, the best love is it's, it's an obvi obvious one. It's obvious and intense. Yeah, I, 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 if I ever, uh, I love you in an obvious way. <laughs> For me, the love interest in superhero movies often fall flat and even take from the film. However, this relationship elevates everything in the film from the humor to the drama. Mark Webb directed 500 Days of Summer, one of my favorite all-time rom-coms. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> I don't stand by that so anymore. So college boy. Yeah, so college 20 boy. 20 years old. And he once again shows that he's one of the best directors working today at showcasing young love. <laughs> there's, no, there's no one thing I can pinpoint as making the film for me everything in this film. What? <laughs> <laughs> was executed as well as it could have. Who is this person? Could have been. <laughs> However, I'll be hard pressed to find a fact in the film that I enjoyed more than the villains. In this, in, than the villains. <laughs> I, 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 there's, oh, I gotta do this quicker. It sounds like someone's having a stroll. <laughs> I was having a stroll. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're oh, like, I have to get this out. You're like Peter Parker's dad in the plane. He's like, I have to. Oh, tell Roosevelt, my son I love him. Roosevelt, 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 Roosevelt. In this film, we are presented with three: the Green Goblin, the Rhino, and the main antagonist, Electro. Three villains was a red flag for many fans who remember the random pick and mix villains that Spider-Man Three was. For me, a worrying song was a worrying sign was how Max Dillon, the man destined to become Electro, seemed to appear in the trailers. He had that classic Spidey villain appearance of being a kind-hearted scientist who gets in a freak accident, resulting in gaining new and dangerous powers while challenging their moral compass. While he does follow some of these tropes, he is a very much a unique and interesting character. <laughs> Even before he gains life-changing powers, Max is clearly an unusual man <laughs> <laughs> and is a villain the likes we have not seen in a Spidey villain ever. Okay, you know, it's almost over, good. I, was, I, I just scroll down there and I'm like, how long is this? I've got two paragraphs left. Brilliant. My favorite villain, my favorite villain across any genre is the Green Goblin. I stand by that. He's a great villain. Mm. 
In, not in this movie, in like in literature. Generally, yeah, yeah. In, in generally. Yeah. That new Spider-Man movie, come on, unreal. Despite his silly name and appearance, he is such a deeply layered and well-developed character. You essentially get Lex Luthor and the Joker in one demonic pass- package. Dahan gives the character the performance it has long deserved and outperforms Willem Dafoe and James Franco's takes, which is a master achievement considering the stature of those actors. That's Fuck completely off. wrong. Fuck off. Past John, no. Jesus, past John. What are you... You've had a couple of howlers here now in this. <laughs> That is one of the most embarrassing things I've ever said. Yeah, truly. Sorry, Better than Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. No. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Willem Dafoe. I'm so sorry. Please, he, no, he don't. He listens as well. Shit. Yeah. Sorry, Dafoe. Although mainly a force from the shadows for most of the movie, his few highlights are the film's highlights for me. <laughs> his few highlights, his highlights are the highlights film's are highlights. are also my highlights. Yes. The rhino would be far from the multi-dimensional character the other two rogues are, and that's perfect. Webb has learned an all-important lesson from other superhero directors need to learn. Not all villains need to be complex. <laughs> perfect. I, pre- I actually preach that one, yeah. They don't need an origin story. Give them a clear voice, a clear motivation, and make them a threat. It will take a few more v- viewings... And at least one in IMAX 3D. (laughs) Before I can cast this film in my all-time favorite films list. However, I am confident it's going to be high. In a summer full of superhero films, so far we have had two and both have been great. It is going to be very interesting to see if this is all just being a brilliant start to a mediocre season or will X-Men Days of Future Past and Guardians of the Galaxy be able to keep this standard up? Judging by the, their trailers, we may be in store for a summer of films like none we have seen before. I could do a six-hour podcast. <laughs> Oh my God. Covering the reasons I love this film, but now I think it's up to yourselves to go and see what you think. Are you excited for the amazing (laughs) Spider Man 2? If you have seen it, what are your thoughts? What superhero flick do you think will rule the summer? Comment below. (laughs) Wow. Oh, I feel like an exorcism. Oh my god. It's out of you now. You're done. I'm so sorry to the people of the internet. And you didn't even need six hours. You only needed one and a bit. There you go. Oh my gosh. Wow. I, I could talk more about this movie. Um, Go and watch it, guys. Go and watch it. But defend this movie. I feel like this movie has its defenders. Let's come out of the shadows and stop being ashamed of ourselves. Yeah. Let's just like bad things. Yeah. Absolutely, that's what Flap Culture is all about. What's about? Liking shit. Um, John, it's been such a pleasure. You're always welcome back. There's the Blu-ray again. Where can people find you if they want to hear more? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got... Uh, I'm I, I'm going to announce I'm starting a new podcast called The Amazing John Spallantu, <laughs> Um where we just watch this weekly and we... No, I... That would... That's, it's weird that would be a believable thing that I would start. <laughs> uh, find me at John Spallant... I just don't know why I wipe my nose at that moment. Uh, at John Spallant Comedy on Instagram. And that's where I'll announce stuff if I'm doing bits. Um... But this was so much fun. Thank you, first of all, for having me on. You're but, so welcome. But thank you for giving me an excuse to rewatch this movie. And because it's hard time. as a person in their adult life to find an excuse or a reason to say, I have to sit down and watch The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And so you gave me that reason. Um, and thank you for championing uh, true art. Again, again, that's what we're here for. What did you think of the movie? <laughs> I thought it was good. I gave it three stars on Letterbox. Yeah, there we go. It's Fanuta J on Letterbox. If you want to read yes. more. Yes. Um, oh, I, I, I'm the John Splan on Letterbox, but I don't review movies on it. I just put a diary. But you'll see oh, yeah. how stupid I watched sixty movies so far this year. So Why watch my addiction. Okay, what was your favorite so far? Um, I oh, uh, the movies of Elaine May. Okay. I watched three of them in a row. Um, a New Leaf. The Heartbreak Kid and Mikey and Nikki. The first two are super funny comedies from the 70s, but like, the Heartbreak Kid is like one of the most 
awful protagonists you've ever seen in a comedy, but you're still rooting for them. And then Mikey and Nikki is just like this beautiful, amazing showcase of acting. It's about like these two best friends and they're basically going through a breakup. And that's all I'll kind of tell you about it, but it's... John Cassavetes and Peter Falk, and they give these amazing performances. My uh, tastes have gone a little bit more sophisticated since <laughs> I uh, since I first reviewed The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I was uh, thinking, it doesn't sound like they're superhero. No, I don't watch much superhero movies anymore. I think they peaked in 2014. Fair. You were like, they'll never do better, so you know they'll I'm They'll never done. do better. No, no, they'll no. They'll never do better. John Spillane, you are... How do I end this again? Sorry. John... John Spillane, thank you so much for joining me on Flop Culture. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Bye.